What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, March 5th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, U.S. Northeast gasoline reserve could be sold off. We're not kidding you folks. That's the headline. Next up, U.S. funding bill blocks China from buying oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Next up, analysts forecast, quote, lower for longer prices in the LNG market. Not good for America's natural gas players. And then finally, we'll finish up with two ways to play Europe's $800 billion energy crisis. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas finance markets. Oil prices settled a little bit lower um, than the open, mainly on some, on, on some demand side pulls. We did see OPEC Plus go ahead and confirm an extension of the two point. 2 million barrel cuts they have already implemented. And then an interesting note outside of from EQT, which has signals some headwinds going on for the natural gas market. So as always, guys, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Go ahead and kick us off. Hey, let's get ready to rumble here, Michael. Uh, U.S. Northeast gasoline reserve could be sold off. Um, this bill, let me, uh, the 1 million barrel Northeast gasoline supply reserve in the fiscal year, 2024, a funding bill up for discussion. This is about as despicable and stupid as it gets upon completion of such uh, sale. The secretary shall carry out the closure of the Northeast gasoline supply reserve, the bill says. This, uh, um, the NGR, the uh, gas reserve holds 1 million barrels of gasoline, including 700,000 barrels located in New York Harbor, 200,000 barrels in the Boston, and 100,000 barrels in South, South Portland, Maine. What happens if we have an emergency, Michael? Yeah, it seems to be, again, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and the Northeast Gas and Supply Reserve have turned into basically political tools in order to help help who's ever in power and lower prices. I mean, there's no one way to describe it. I mean, they they, they mentioned the, the second article that we're about to cover about blocking China from buying any of this. Sure, I commend that, but should we be selling that anyway? You got to remember, we did sell some SPR stuff to China. I don't want to jump too far ahead there, but... Right. They both these both these articles go hand in hand. Uh, they do. And and I just find it absolutely despicable that our uh, energy policy makers uh, have the brain power of a potato. butt. yeah, it's well, let, read me that second. Let, let's read the second one. OK, uh, U.S. funding bill uh, blocks China from buying oil strategic petroleum reserve. This one is a bit different from the standpoint that a measure in the U.S. funding legislation, this is, a, I think it's in the same bill covering a different topic. Uh, the SBR say, uh, sales to China heated up, remember in the 2022 midterm when he sold a bazillion barrels, he sold 180 million barrels to an all time low. Um, and then he sold 1 million barrels to Unipec America, a Houston based arm of China's Synoptic. Uh, oh, wasn't that the one Hunter was in? Uh, in uh, former President Donald Trump, some SBR oil was sold to Petro China International, a subsidiary of Chinese state oil, Petro China. This is just unbelievable. Um, yeah, and it's unfortunately an issue for both sides of the aisle, clearly with 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 Biden and Trump both engaging in this. I mean, that for once, I don't think there's been any bill that a, that Senator Chris Murphy has put up that I've been a fan of, except for this one. I think it's disgusting because they're going to sell more, Michael. And what they're going to do, it's going to be the shell game. Oh, quick for our podcast listeners i'm moving shell game around and they're going to have another corporate entity that then that politicians are going to get money off of and i think this is despicable 
How do we replenish the strategic oil reserve? Well, no, I'm with you. You have to replenish it. But if we're at least going to sell, I'd rather not be selling to China. But you're right. There will always be ways to get around this. And and, and this is more of a symbolic gesture than anything. But at some point, at least I'll take the symbolic gesture. But I'm right. If there's not true hard line making sure none of this flows to China, it, it really is just nothing more than a vanity play. No, this is not even a vanity play. They walk by the mirror and just kind of and then kept going. This is not, you know, something. All right. What's next? I just got air sick. You know, sorry about that. An analysis forecast lower for longer prices in LNG market. You know, this is kind of wild. Pipelines matter. Not only do physics and fiscal responsibility matter, but there, you're seeing a huge pipeline move around the world. Cutter aims to leverage its position as the world's lowest cost LNG producer to increase market share. Uh, Michael, they're uh, really low because they have no um, ESG or regulatory bodies uh, doing legislation through regulatory action. Uh, here's something that was interesting in here when factoring in LNG export capacity under the uh, construction in the U.S. and other areas, we anticipate 200 MPTA of addictive additive global LNG supply capacity before the end of this decade can uh, can constituting 50 percent of the 409 MPTA uh, global supply. That's nuts. It, it, it really is nuts. And, and, it, and it comes back to the theme that we've been banging our hand on the, the table for, for weeks now is why in the world would we ban new LNG projects in, in light of this? Well, the contracts are going to go away because they're all, I mean, how many yep. uh, 25 year contracts are going to get signed? Um, uh, the more and more natural gas that is demanded around the world, especially in Asia, people need more power and the mm -hmm. data centers are going to need more power. You want AI? I got to have new. Yeah. And, and, gas. and, and I'm going to probably push back on this, you know, MUFG bank forecast of a surplus of LNG. I don't know. I think we'll find a way to consume it. And if, we're not going to end up in this glut. Now, I do think we're going to have a we're, 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 we're probably slightly oversaturated. And this doesn't mean that the U.S. natural gas market isn't going to get slammed, though, and will continue to get slammed because, you know, it it's. Do I believe we're going to be in a massive supply glut come 2025? I think we'll be more oversupplied than undersupplied, which will lead to lower prices. I don't think necessarily the idea that. Um, we're going to become super oversupplied is going to be a true, a true thing. But, you know, there are some interesting notes in here um, and, and, and they do a good job, I think, of explaining what some of the drivers of it are. Well, one of the things to think about is the uh, Hooties blowing up uh, ships in yep. the Red Sea are not affecting LNG tankers as much as they're avoiding uh, the Red Sea and have been. It's not that they have been uh, rolling through. You also have to look at LNG um, is not going to have a dark fleet because uh, the tankers are all newer. There's not a rust bucket brigade of uh, a parade running around with tetanus shots being handed out. All right. You ready yeah, to go no, to the absolutely. Minute? What's next? Two ways to play Europe's $800 billion Ugh. energy crisis. This is kind of wild, Michael. You know, the sanctions that pushed Russia's invasion of Euro uh, uh, Ukraine, hundreds of billions of dollars on those sanctions have cost the consumers. Germany earmarked 16 billion for the construction of four natural gas power plants uh, to complement the renewable energy expansion. And Austria has made its largest natural gas in four decades. Wow. Yesterday, you and I talked about the UK and uh, or excuse me, Denmark and their gigantic LN, uh, natural gas 
coming in off of the uh, North Sea. So uh, Europe has to come to shape with the global changing natural gas and LNG markets. Um, total Energies uh, is actually a hoot. They were the ones that we talked about yesterday yep. as well. You have MCF Energy. Uh, the small cap is backed by Ford Nicholson is convinced that this is the right atmosphere to boost it. Uh, we have several others in here. Ten more companies looking to capitalize on the energy bull market. Uh, Halliburton, Schlumberger, Enbridge, Goler LNG, uh, Transocean, and Imperial Oil, uh, Pemba Pipeline, Arc Resources, uh, Tor Tourmaline, and precision drilling. That's a who's who in the oil space, oil and gas space, isn't it? No, it, it, it really is. Um, you know, I'm probably going to put my money on uh, um, MCF Energy, mainly because, you know, they're an actual producer. And if those prices, if, if, if we look and there isn't the U.S. LNG as available on the market, they, they could continue um, to rise, but I'm going to tend to avoid probably some natural gas. But I mean, it, it, it's never a bad idea to hit Enbridge when you're talking about, um, oh, yeah. um, um, we, we will always need midstream. Now, do I like the master limited partnership setup? Mm, not so much. You no. know, I think, you know, not, not sure if I want to invest in trans. It's an interesting list, but uh, I'm not sure if any one of them are going to, necessarily catch my transocean i would not touch with a stick we don't give in uh investment advice but i do like goler um, yeah <laughs> so uh what else you got that's it for me man off to you all right well we'll uh before we get into finance guys we'll go ahead and pay the bills here as always the news and analysis that you've just heard and will continue to hear is brought to you by the world's greatest website www.energynewsbeat.com the best place for all of your energy and oil and gas news Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business check out the description below for all articles links uh, to the podcast or, or excuse me links to all of the articles timestamps for the podcast um, you can also check us out on YouTube. You can also, we're, we're, we have a new survey that we're rolling out, so please hit the description. Go fill out the survey. It's going to get you some free access to a really cool project that we're working on right now in correspondence with Energy News Beat, so check that out. Also, check out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. Get it while you still can. Um, and as always, guys, again, visit us online, www.energynewsbeat.com. As we move over to the financial side of things, we, we saw the S&P 500, um, uh, a fairly flat day, only down about a tenth of a percentage point. NASDAQ down about uh, half a percentage point. Uh, one, uh, two year yields up about 1.5 percentage points. 10 year yields only rise about 0.7 percentage point. Dollar index fairly flat. We did see Bitcoin up $4,000 today. That's 7% up to 67,500. So, so Bitcoin continues uh, to be on its bull tear, especially as that halving comes up. Um, we saw crude oil prices uh, down about a 1.5 percentage points, currently trading 78, 79 as we record this about 3 p.m. here on the 4th. So, Pretty weak day considering that OPEC was going to come in and and theoretically extend their output cuts. I mean, that's kind of the the back end of the show here I wanted to talk about was mainly, you know, we found out yesterday that um, or excuse me, found out on Sunday specifically that um, OPEC went ahead and decided to extend its 2.2 million barrel voluntary cut through the end of quarter two. Uh, Russia is going to go ahead um, and cut both oil output and oil output exports by another 417,000 barrels and that Brent spread widens just a little bit Brent still trading about 8338 as we again record this so super interesting um 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 you know them kind of getting ahead of the curb here saying hey we're going to keep cutting and 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 oil prices specifically here in the United States and that WTI index doesn't necessarily respond i think the other interesting note um is 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 we did see um you know, I 
I think maybe the market was expecting more. Who knows? I find it super interesting that prices didn't necessarily hold themselves. I think it has, again, a, a little bit to do with, with what's going on in the Middle East. It seems like a ceasefire is a little bit more imminent than it was yesterday. These things kind of swing again and again. So, um, you know, I think there is also, you know, um, as we move seasonally into – into summer, some of the heating oil is going to become less valuable, which is going to maybe you know be a, a, a push down on prices. But again, I think you know with, with OPEC coming out and, and extending their cuts, it's a signal that they're willing to continue to support the market. You know, this is just a little tidbit. There's not much to this press release other than to say that EQ announces strategic production curtailment. Well, that's a phrase. I our guy of the week right there, Cameron Horowitz. Great job. That's a headline right there that basically says. We've made a strategic decision to curtail approximately one BCF uh, per day of gross production beginning in late February in response to the current low natural gas price environment resulting from a warm winter weather and consequential elevated storage levels. The company expects to maintain this curtailment through the month of March and will reassess market conditions thereafter. Curtailments are expected to total 30 to 40 BCF of net production uh, during the first quarter. Wow. Yeah, so you, if, if you're not watching on YouTube, folks, Stu's eyes were about as big as his glasses. That's a pretty interesting press release right there. That it's more profitable for you to turn off gas than it is to produce it. Wow. It, wow. I, I did not see that one coming. Uh, I have to hand it to Toby Rice. I mean, he knows what's going on. Hey, he's trying to unleash L eat, unleash LNG, and all that's gotten him is a BCF offline per day and no LNG exports. So um, I feel bad for the guy. He's just getting hit left and right. No, but uh, good management, good numbers, and he does turn them out consistently. He, he, he does. Um, he does. But we got we love a good IR ca uh, guy candidate of the week, Cameron Horowitz. Great job. Um, a strategic production curtailment. That's what I'm going to start saying when I got to shut in wells. No, no, it's strategic, strategic production curtailment. curtailment. I, mean, I like that. It is strategic. They're shutting it down for, I'm sure, uh, you know, economics of scale. I mean, I, I, you, you can understand why a company this large would do it. It just, it just, uh, it, it, it gives us more news for the aggregators, I guess. I'm not sure. What else you got, Stu? That. That's about it. Just buckle up, get ready for some fun. You've got two solo shows coming up. I've got to go across country uh, to L.A. and hold the fort down uh, for some of our consulting you're, work. So you're going out of the country, aren't you? Mm, well, basically, you're, I'm going to our favorite state, California. Uh, you're going to a third world, California. I love it. I'm dude. actually I mean, I, I'll be in Beverly Hills. I'll be the farthest thing from a third world country in retrospect, but I will be on another planet. Oh, uh, boy, talk about an oxymoron there. You got the homeless laying out there on Radio Drive, and then you got the other people in the uh, Beverly Hills Hotel, baby. Are you really? No, it's uh, different. It's the I forget what the hotel. It's not that, unfortunately. Oh, OK, cool. Hey, we'll have to do a live podcast from there. Yeah, maybe it will. We'll be busy. We'll be there representing again some of our consulting business. But uh, but no. Hey, so Stu will be in the hey, chair. If, if um, you Tuesday. run into a street. A uh, bum or a homeless guy. Let's do a show. I think yes. that would be great. What do you Live think? I'm from the border, just how you like it. Hey, if you get Governor Newsom there, I want to talk to Oil Slick. There's I think no that way. would be great. Yeah, there's no way. Um, but <laughs> there's no way. You keep dreaming, but that's fine. I mean, yeah, I, if he's there, we'll get an interview. Don't okay. don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> bye, guys. We'll let you get out of here. Appreciate you joining us on this Tuesday. You've got Stu for the rest of the week. I will be back in the chair Monday. We'll see you later, folks.